Oxfit Radio, fit as an ox, fit at any age. Hello, I'm your host, Rashid Westcott. I'll be exploring the positive impact of exercise and healthy living on helping both young and old achieve a long and active life. Did you know that aging can be slowed down and even reversed with exercise? And many health ailments can also be reduced or even prevented as well. Come join me as we explore these topics and more with leading experts in the field of exercise, wellness, and nutrition. Please remember to always consult your personal physician before beginning any exercise or nutritional program. In our second episode, we'll be talking with powerlifting coach Richard Schuler about the benefits of strength training. We'll be covering the principles of progressive training, working out as one gets older, building muscle and bone density for both men and women, dieting and nutrition, the growth mindset, and joining a fitness center. Today's guest is Dr. Richard Schuler. Dr. Schuler is a retired scientist, having worked at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory and the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. He is a Vietnam veteran, having served in the United States Navy. Dr. Schuler is also a powerlifting competitor, winner of the 2005 World Masters Championship silver medal and the bronze medal in the 2008 North American Powerlifting Championship. He is author of several books on powerlifting and fitness and is a strength training coach. Dr. Schuler is still competing in powerlifting at age 79. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Schuler. Well, hey, thanks so much for having me. Richard, uh, you've been involved in sports and physical fitness uh, pretty much your whole life, including your youth. What got you interested in, in this and, and what, what's motivated you to stick with it through the years? Well, what got me started was uh, I was a 129-pound freshman who wanted to play high school football. And uh, back in 1955, nobody lifted weights. But I found a, a couple of magazines in the drugstore <laughs> uh, that talked about weightlifting. And I thought, well, if I can put some muscle on, I, I could be able to play without getting killed. Is that the Charles, uh, the Charles that, Atlas edition? Yeah. <laughs> No, no. The char I tried Charles Atlas, which was mostly isometrics and push-ups, and uh, that didn't do much for me. I still had 12-inch arms, but uh, <laughs> after <laughs> hey, after a summer with uh, Joe Weider's barbells, I was uh, I put on like 30 pounds over one summer, wow. and uh, had a much much uh, more uh, you know happy fall than I might have had otherwise. <laughs> Harder to uh, harder to well, take harder to take down on the field, I can imagine. Uh yeah, and if I got my hands on you, you were gonna fall down. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was uh yeah, and see back then nobody lifted weights when they played football. I was assured by everyone that my muscles would be full of air, that I would be muscle bound, that I would be right. slow. Uh everything that you know, everything awful was gonna happen. Yeah, nobody <laughs> lifted yeah, nobody lifted weights back then. No, they didn't. It, it took. It was about five or six years later that it became kind of popularized to think that the San Diego Chargers were a pro team uh, in the old American Football League, and they started doing it, and they were dominating uh, people. So <laughs> the message got around really fast. Right. So by the end, you know, by the middle of the end of '60s, uh, most teams were lifting weights. So anyway. Um, now, why have I stayed with it through the years? I mean, I just enjoy the process. I mean, I really do enjoy working out. And, you know, I've always enjoyed playing sports. I think I mentioned to you I've played eight different sports in my in my life. And, right. uh, you know, still enjoy the competition. And, you know, I mean, it, it's friendly and I just I just enjoy doing it. So it's been a it's been a blessing in that regard. You did a lot of a lot of track and field, too, right? Yeah, I was a. Uh, a sprinter back in the day and then uh, gradually there were no sprint races for old guys so I started running longer distances you know like you know 5k 10k occasionally a 10 miler but uh, um, never had any interest in running the marathon uh, but uh, yeah I was uh, I ran track and field and you know played baseball and you know in high school of course football and wrestling and stuff like that but um, and then I did Olympic style weightlifting in college um uh -huh. but anyway that was uh, <laughs> uh you know that was just some of the things i did and uh, that's but. that's uh 
a very active uh, active life. So now, well, yeah, I mean, right, and I kept it up. I mean, through you know, when I was in my scientific career, I mean, it's almost like I had two personalities: one, you know, the athlete, and the other, the scientist. Although, I've I've met a few people who did the same thing, but. Um, you know, I mean, I enjoyed both, and even though they were completely different uh, parts of my right. life, I really enjoyed them both. And, yeah, uh, so, I mean, so many, you know, so many people have a. Uh, excuse me, Richard. So many people have a, a really busy life, and and you, since you mentioned that, that you you were doing this while you were working, uh, and had a pretty busy schedule as a scientist. How how did you fit all that in? Well, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is that uh, you sort of developed um, a skill of fitting fitting everything in. It is a skill, too, because, I mean, I, for example, um, you know, when I was, you know, for the last 10 or 12 years, uh, you know, I had a, a, a weightlifting gym I could go to at lunchtime that was within a, a quick walk of my office. Um you know, and I know other people uh, that I see now have, you know, that you strategically uh, position your your workout training some point at some point during your day when you know you can, um, you know, but you're not going to be, um, you know, dealing with conflicting demands. Right. The other thing too, and this and this is a big one, especially for professional people, is I observed early on that a lot of people spent a lot of time that was sort of wasted because they were really inefficient at what they were doing. Mm. So I you know, throughout my career, I really worked on uh, working efficiently, you know, and you get a lot more done in one hour than some people do in six or eight. Um, right. Yeah. You see a lot of people uh, in the gym on their phone or, or I don't know, uh, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or, you know, again, distractions and things like that have a, have a way of just eating up time. And even Bill Gates can't buy five minutes of yesterday. So, you know, you, you've got to use what you have wisely. <laughs> right. Um, now, now so. Richard, you're almost 80 years old, and it's pretty impressive that you're still in such great shape. So, but I have to ask you, are you slowing down a bit? Not that I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Not that I've noticed. Yeah. Um, so how has how staying in shape made a difference, uh, you know, in, in your life as you grow older? Is it, uh, I mean, do you see well, it, any, it's almost any, like, any change yeah, in I, your, your abilities? Or, I mean, I, I see some in mine, but it's not like yeah. what uh, I see in other people, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same thing. I mean, am I as strong as I was when I was 50? No. Uh, am I um, stronger than most 50 year olds? Oh, yes. Um, but, you know, am I equal to what I was as my peak as a sprinter? No. Um, do I still sprint? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there is some some decline, but it's, uh, you know, compared to your contemporaries, it's very little. And uh, I mean, it, I went to a, a, a yeah, sort of a reunion of people who went to high school the same time I did. And um, I mean, so many people who are, uh, you know, my age are just completely, um, you know, kind of sick, halt and infirm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, basically I probably, you know, roar around like, you know, a fairly typical 30 year old. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, Again, um, I'm not quite as fast as I was, and, um, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm pretty much the same size as I was in college. I mean, like 5'10", 160, 165 pounds. Um, but, uh, and, you know, that didn't happen, you know, by magic. You got to work right. it. But, uh, it's a lot, a lot of work, a lot of hard work. Yeah. And it still yeah. takes, yeah. it still takes a lot of hard work to, to keep that. Oh, it does, yes. Yeah. Right. And it's, but boy, is it worth it. I mean, just in the way you feel 24, seven, 365, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, you know, likewise, so. likewise. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Richard, Richard, you've written a, a number of books. I mean, you, you're, you're a very active man. So you, you compete, you're, you're an author, uh, you have your own website. So, uh, what got you interested in writing the book, uh, getting back into shape after 50? 
Well, that particular one, um, I should I should mention that um, you know when I was a scientist, I you know it, it was publish and prosper. We don't say publish and perish. You know, and I wrote <laughs> books. And I, I wrote a lot of I wrote a lot of books, articles, reports, everything. And, you know, constantly writing. So, uh, but, hey, you know, when I'm in fitness, why you know why not? Um, in the sense of uh, this was a way to communicate a lot of the things I would learned and discovered to other people. And, uh, you know, the first one that uh, you know, I, I wrote a powerlifting book called, uh, you know, Powerlifting Over 50. But the one you're referring to is Get Back in Shape After 50. It struck me that there's so many uh, people out there who are at that in that age group that really don't have a have a good roadmap to to get started. Um, mm-hmm. And sort of random activity isn't going to do much for you. It uh, you get you'll get some results just by showing up for the first few weeks. But after that, unless you're working on a program, you're going to stall out and get discouraged and not make much progress. So, right. Um, yeah. You, you need a, you need a program, a training program with a goal and, a, and an objective. Right. Right. Yeah. And you have to, and it has to be based on, you know, principles of training that are going to enable you to keep making progress. So, right. So I know you, the title of your book is uh, for people after 50, but can can anybody use this program if you're out of shape? Oh, yes, yes, anybody could. Um, it's a good way to get started, uh, you know, regardless of your age. Right, because the exercise in it, as, as uh, I understand it, they're, they're, they're targeting, you know, major muscle groups, and helping you develop strength in you know, connective tissues and so forth that that if you don't use them after a while they start to atrophy and and you got to right, reactivate right. them right yeah reactivate rebuild and, and you can still do this uh, you know in fact i remember decades ago i read a study of some group up up your way in boston i think they were at the the uh, Harvard Med School who had this group of 90 year olds that they were putting on weight training and they actually put on muscle mass. Yeah. So if you do the right, if you do the right exercises, yeah, you can rebuild an amazing amount of your capability. So, and that's, that's really important as you get older yeah. because you, you start to, you start to lose your flexibility and uh, your sense of balance and so forth. I mean, uh, President Carter, you know, he's he's fallen again. I think this is the, in, ah. the second time in a, in a in a, yeah. a month or two, you know. And that's uh, thank goodness he's okay. But you know, so many adults yeah. Uh, yeah. F- f- when they're older, uh, especially you know, your your bone density starts to uh, to weaken, and oh, yeah. Yeah. and you fall. <laughs> it can that can be it. It can send you yeah. to the nursing home, and you, you know that it's kind of you're crippled. So it's yes. really important that. Uh, oh you know, yeah, yeah, you, and, and you if you start you start in your fifties and sixties, you can you can prevent that stuff because weightlifting will counter reverse osteoporosis because um, bones respond to uh, to weight training and resistance training just like uh, muscles do. They, right, uh, but they, interesting they, as they I understand. And, yeah, as I understand it, uh, running actually won't do that for you because it's it's not it's not uh, strengthening the bones in your upper body and your spine, I believe. So your your legs might yeah, that, be that, strong. Yeah, and your lungs will be in good shape. Hey, by the way, I mean I still run, but it's not it's not for that. No, and you are correct. Just running alone won't do it. Uh, you really got to you've got to combine them, both uh, you know the cardio training and the, uh, the resistance weight training. Yeah, as you get older, that's and the, the only uh, way to get strong yeah, right. and stay durable. <laughs> and, a lo- and a lot of people are not aware of that. They they don't understand what strength training is about. You know, they think that oh, you know that's that's uh, bodybuilders or you know that's that's all vanity you know it's uh that's not for me or or women feel that uh you know lifting weights uh, you know, you're going to start looking like a, a man so uh, these are yeah. misconceptions don't you think total total misconceptions i mean like i said hey i'm i'm 
as strong as uh, probably most high school athletes, most of the really good high school athletes. I'm 5'10", 160. I'm slender. Um, and, um, you know, but, I mean, I kind of look, I guess if you had to have a look, it's sort of like a uh, college wrestler or something like that. But you don't automatically get big, and women almost never get big. They get smaller. Uh, they get, uh, you know, because uh, they get more compact and um a lot of the uh, the men I know who who do you know pretty intense training just look like, look like uh, um, you know somebody that you'd see modeling clothes for you know a really right. cool <laughs> yeah yeah you know like hey you like Armani suits well <laughs> that kind of stuff um, and uh, it's uh, yeah I mean what it does is it creates a kind of a normal uh, or an optimal human body. Uh, the people who grow, you know, these gigantic uh, uh, lumps and stuff are, you know, you have to take a lot of, you know, banned substances to get to get like that. Um, and, yeah, or I mean, I guess some people might be, you know, genetically uh, tuned that way to to get muscle mass very quickly, but but most people oh, vanishingly vanishingly few. <laughs> right, right. So I, I mean, think. I know Samoan guys who are huge, but they would be huge anyway. Um, yeah. And, you know, lifting weights helps them get smaller. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it, it basically it's changing your body composition to being one of being toned, right, as opposed to uh, being gigantic or something like that. Right, right, yeah. So, no, it, it, it's, uh, again, the kind of training that, you know, I would say 98% of the people do is going to, you know, result in an athletic appearance, not a, you know, a, uh, you know, not something that should be haunting a bell tower. So. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk. Yes, yes, yes. So, so but, uh, I have a question. So I think probably some of our listeners are, are wondering about, uh, you know, what type of hurdles that uh, people might uh expect uh if the you know if you haven't exercised in a while what what kind of obstacles are in their way and and how can they overcome some of those things well again the thing the thing to expect if you haven't exercised for a while you're going to have sort of an um a you know some muscle groups will be you know adequate and others will be completely um you know untrained so that you're going to find that you, there's certain things you can't do very easily and some that eh, they're not too hard to do and others you can't do at all. Um, that uh, you just have to be patient because it gets pretty discouraging if you're starting out and you feel, oh my God, I, you know, back when I was 18, I used to be able to do this. And um, no, hey, just be patient, stay the course. You will be able to do it again. Um, you will probably, um, with systematic training, get a lot better at things that you thought, oh, maybe I'll never see that again. Uh, and uh, now there's, again, of course, obvious limits. I mean, you're not going to be, you know, a 25-year-old uh, professional athlete, but, you know, you will be a, an amazing physical specimen. But it's mainly the, the, the getting discouraged early or feeling like, you know, let's say you go to a gym and you look around and you think everybody – you know, here to you, it looks like a god or a goddess, and they know everything they're doing, and right. uh, they're all looking at me and laughing. Well, they're not. No, no, <laughs> almost nobody's <laughs> paying any any attention to you. They're all looking at themselves in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, remember. I think I think that I mean I, I know when I was young, you know, I, I was very self conscious, and yeah. and. I look at other people and it's like you say, you know, you, uh, you think they're laughing at you, but actually you're right. There's, they, they don't even, they, they really couldn't there. care less. <laughs> they're so into themselves, but right, it's, right. Uh, yeah. yeah and, and you can't, you can't really compare yourself to somebody else because everybody's body is different. You know, you, you, uh, you might be looking at the person that, uh, as you say, it could be on supplements or, or they're just genetically gifted that way. And so 
you have to you have to realize that it's your yourself right that that you're working with and and nobody else and most people have never tapped into their potential no most people don't they don't realize what their potential you know could be and um you know in regards to that um uh, you asked me to uh, to talk about uh, this whole issue of mindset and you know a closed yeah, mind yeah yeah right in in your book you talk about uh the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset yeah a fixed mindset sort of assumes that all of all of your potential is defined at birth you know you're never going to be any better than um, a certain level because it's all determined in advance, which turns out on the basis of a lot of research to be complete hokum. Mm. Um, <laughs> there's a, uh, um, a psychologist by the name of Carol Dweck who wrote a book called Mindset, a uh, New Psychology of Success, that has had a huge impact on people understanding that their potential is not is not even knowable at, when they start out on a given um you know, a given track. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about trying to learn mathematics or trying to become physically fit or, you know, mastering some really difficult skill. Um, you have no idea at the start what, you know, how far you can go. It's going to be determined by, you know, a combination of how hard you work, um, how smart you work, how mm -hmm. diligent you are, how consistent, a whole bunch of factors that are totally under your control. Um, and that's a great liberating message to, uh, to everyone far and wide. You know, you may be, uh, um, sitting there thinking, oh, I'm a, you know, 300 pounds of, uh, inert mass and, you know, I'll never, I'll never see, uh, you know, see the day when I go out on the beach again. And, and no, that's wrong. You don't know that. You know, right. you, you won't have, you haven't a clue until you, uh, start working at it and are, you're consistent. Uh, is it, you know, is great change going to happen overnight? No. Uh, I mean, anything of value takes a long time to work on and build. So, you know, just, but regard it as, Hey, there's no limits that, you know, a priori that, uh, you know, keep you from achieving real major success. Right. You know, and, so, and, 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 and I, that's what I like about your book. Uh, getting back into shape after 50 is that you know, you approach it in a holistic sense and you, you right. start, you start with the mindset, you know, you, you start with your vision, you know, what, what do you want to achieve? Cause it's, it, it's right. for you. It's, it, you know, this is, this is about you. And so, yeah. and the mind is what probably 90% of what you're going to be doing. You know, it, you, you, you have to keep yourself motivated. You have to keep yourself focused. And that's all mental fortitude. And, and then, yeah. then there's nutrition and there's the, your exercise and your rest, you know, it's a whole, you know, program. In essence, that's how I, you know, try to try to convey it to people that I work with is that, Hey, look, uh, this is not just, uh, one, one thing you've got to you've got to do all of them and your mindset is going to you know your motivation and so forth um and your discipline and all these other mental factors are the things you have to you know mobilize when you need them uh because uh it there's nothing automatic it's not like uh, it's not like getting a vaccination and then being you know permanently uh, immune to something or permanently right. fit it, you know you have to you have to attend this every day. And I like to tell people too, that, it, you know, don't think of, of your nutrition as being on a diet, you know, that's not imposed from outside. You've decided that for you, you want a lifestyle. That means you eat a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it's a difference from, I can't have this. I can't have that. Right. No, you, you choose to eat certain things because it's part of who you are. <laughs> yeah, and, your life. yeah, and a lot of these uh, diets, they're, they're fads, right? You, they're not possible to maintain, so you you end up going off of them anyway, and uh, oftentimes well, gain yeah. more weight than what you yeah, started I, with. Yeah. yeah, I was reading in the Harvard Health letter about you know, a couple months ago that remember if you remember that program a few years ago called uh, the Biggest Loser. Yes. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> you went back and found everybody on that program regained all of the weight they lost. Um, and, yeah, uh, it's... and in some cases, a bit more. Um, right. Yeah, and there's there's a science behind that why that happens, right? So as you as you lose your weight without strength training, you lose your muscle mass, and as we know, muscle has a higher uh, rate of burning calories at rest than fat tissue. So when oh, yeah. you when you lose that muscle mass, okay, you, you're not you went from 200 to 150, right? So, but if you lost 30 pounds of muscle, your resting, uh, your basal uh, metabolic rate, right, is lower than yeah. when you started. So you, you can't maintain that diet because it's too too rigorous and uh, it's not, it's just not uh, sustainable. And then, so now you're done with your diet and your resting met uh, metabolism is lower than what you started. Right. And then you... Yeah, and that and then you eat yeah. the same amount of food, right? So now you're not burning the calories that you used to, and you've just packed on that weight and then more. So it's a it's a vicious cycle that people don't understand. So and as you say, there's no, it's not an easy fix. You it's hard work, but you've got to introduce strength training. So that's right. that's something that uh, most people. I mean, I wasn't aware of of that. I, I understand. I understood that people like Oprah Winfrey was a, a perfect case where she went on all these diets and then she would just right. put the weight back on and everything she did is just the weight would come back on. So it's, it's actually scientifically proven. That's why. And it's, and it's, it's interesting is that that's kind of a survival mechanism that the body has. Oh, yeah. Right. So it's right. when, when we, when we, uh, go into starvation when you start losing weight that rapidly right your body thinks it's starving and then right. and then yeah. it's and then it goes into okay well you're not using your muscle so i'm going to start eating your muscle because you're trying to survive and if you're not using that right. muscle you don't need it so it's amazing how the body works that way but yeah and, and it's it when i was at oak ridge we you know one of the early things I got exposed to was, you know, they were talking about there are several animals that, that have appetites that are insatiable because if they didn't, they would stop looking for food and they would wind up starving to death. And uh, baboons are, are one of the, the big ones. They have, a, and, I mean, they're constantly looking for food because they can almost never find enough to keep, you know, keep them where they need to be. So your appetite is kind of disconnected from what you really need <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you're a hundred percent right about your your metabolism goes down as you get in better shape um, but hey that's that's part of the um, you know part of uh, you know developing the whole the, the holistic lifestyle hey you know right you'll find you don't really crave nearly as much food as you used to um, yeah, I was thinking last night I went out to a Chinese restaurant with a friend and, and we were amazed at the uh, the portion sizes that uh, people were, were having. And we, we took home half of our food. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was like, hey, well, gee, I guess they make the portion sizes for, you know, the, you know, 19 year olds or something. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, well, anyway. Yeah, I, I understand too that you, that you know your body tries to find a, a kind of a, a balance, a, a state of uh, homeostasis, right. right? So if you eat right. a lot, your your body is going to become accustomed to that. So then the the chemicals yeah. that are given off for hunger and and um, satiation are are set by kind of what your body is used to. So if right. if right. you, as I understand it, you trim you you cut back your weight. In a uh, in a reasonable incremental fashion, your body slowly adjusts to that, and you you probably will have hunger pains, but you have to mentally resist that, right? So because that's yeah. that's your body reacting to wanting that food what it's used to. Yeah, and I think you know that that applies when you're starting you know in some kind of 
a major thing. It, it, you know, over time, you want, you, you know, your body really wants less. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, your stomach shrinks and, uh, you know, you become, you know, more or less, uh, you know, in sync with, you know, what you want is pretty much in sync with, uh, you know, what you wind up eating. That, that's part of what I mean about lifestyle. You, know, you just right. sort of right. gradually match all these things up. Um, do you have to watch it? Sure. I mean, but do you have to, uh, you know, be ever vigilant for the chocolate chip cookie that might have jump out of the, uh, you know, the refrigerator area or the, you know, jump off the desk at you? Yeah. yeah I mean, eat one. You don't need to eat the whole box. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I've, I've cut so, sugar like almost completely out of my diet. And it's yeah, amazing yeah. that I don't, really crave sugar anymore you know, it used to be i'd have to have some kind of a candy or something you know to keep me oh, going yeah. and and now i right. just you know i well maybe i still get the candy but I, but i eat some fruit instead of uh you know right. processed sugar so there's there's definitely things that you can you know you can do to, to... oh yes absolutely yeah because sugar kicks off a big craving uh, if you have a lot of it. And I mean, once you get, once you get past it as you have, you know, eh, no big deal. You, right. know, you don't think about it that much. So. Exactly. So anyway. t- tell me a little bit of, in your book, uh, you talk about, well, your program is based on progressive training. So right. right. What, what is, the, what is that? And, and why is it important? Well, progressive training means that you have to, you know, the, the way that uh, physical conditioning works is that you do a workout and it breaks down your muscles. And then, you know, in the process of eating and sleeping, you recover. And But they rebuild stronger. Uh, they rebuild more dense. They, you know, you burn up some uh, some fat. Mm-hmm. And to continue the, the training effect, you have to continually, you know, uh, change or ramp up what you're doing. Now, it's not exclusively more is better, but you, you wind up doing more weight, you know, a little bit more longer duration, uh, you know, with the, you know, endurance work and things like that. But yeah, you have to continually uh, challenge your body to adapt if mm-hmm. you're going to continue to make progress. And that's the basis of, uh, you know, uh, progressive overload, things like that. But you do it in a sensible way uh, and and in increments that you can handle so that you continue to progress as opposed to hit a plateau and can't go and get any further and things like that. So but yeah, uh, based on, uh, you know, progressive overload, progressive, progressively more demanding kind of routines and things like that. um, Over time, you build up, uh, um, you know, capabilities and strength that you probably never even imagined you could do so <laughs> and, and 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 the concept of progressive training is an ancient one right i mean it goes oh, yeah. back to is it milo the um the oh, wrestler right. exactly yeah yeah and, you know he tells, I probably he, saw the thing about put it you know lift a cow every day from the time it's a calf and <laughs> unfortunately yeah. the cow grows pretty much a lot faster than you can, uh, than your strength will grow. So <laughs> that doesn't always work, but, uh, well, that, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's the, the legend, right? So, so Milo right, was, right. was, uh, a young man and, and he had this little calf that he strapped right, over right. his shoulders and he, I don't know, he walked like a couple, 10 miles. I can't remember how many miles to the, to the, uh, to the amphitheater and, and everyone was laughing at him. And then, uh, you know, a year later, he's carrying a cow <laughs> and he's, he's, a, and he's the size of the cow and, and, well, and nobody could yeah. beat him. <laughs> so there, so it's a, it's yeah. a, uh, yeah, I mean, it, and it works, the progressive training works, but you, but eventually you hit a plateau. So what, what, uh, words of advice can you say when, when somebody's reach that plateau yeah. point, would they, would that happen in three months or? Uh, um, well, I mean, if you, if you don't change the routine you're doing after three months, yeah, you'll plateau probably, you know, at four, four months or something like that. So mm-hmm. you have to change things up to give your, your muscles and your body a new challenge. It's not necessarily more. It may be different. Mm-hmm. It may be, um, you know, it gets more targeted on, 
um, how you want to cycle your, your strength uh, training and things like that. It's a variety of different things, but it's, uh, you know, all with the, you know, in the desire to kind of continually elevate both your, your, the, you know, your base load capacity for your peak strength, you know, your basic strength, and also your durability or your, uh, you know, resilience. And, mm -hmm. you know, you keep elevating these, um, these base load levels that says, okay, well, you know, if I had to go, you know, you live up, up there in Boston where it snows, it says, hey, if I had to go out and shovel snow for, you know, an hour to clear off my driveway and my walks, um, I wouldn't, you know, I, I would have the, the strength to do that and the endurance and just, eh, you know, no big deal. Um, other people, I understand, you know, having grown up in the Midwest, yeah, people drop dead all the time shoveling snow and uh, they're just, they just don't have the base load strength or endurance to do it. And so they're, you know, uh, they have heart attacks or strokes right. or whatever. So it, it, it's, uh, you know, this constant very, you know, not com by constant, I mean, you change your routine probably every four to eight weeks, depending on what you're doing, mm -hmm. but it, it's necessary to do that to keep progressing. So, right. Um, so, so, now I have a question for you, um, people that are uh, starting this program. So they're going to have to have access to some strength training equipment. And right. so is that, is that uh, what, what should they do regarding that? Do they need to jo join a gym or, or what's your recommendation? Right. My recommendation would be um, if you have a convenient gym, start there. Because what you're going to do is, is see what equipment you you you, you personally want to use, uh, and that you you know feel is essential to you, uh, and you won't have to pay very much for your gym membership. Uh, it's not like buying a piece of gear that promises to you know turn you from um, you know a couch potato to an Adonis uh, you know <laughs> in ten days, but, um, where you spend money spend your own money on stuff. Uh, the thing that I suggest early on is that you use a gym mainly to see the kind of things that you are going to use mm -hmm. and use early um, rather than going out and buying something right off, off the bat. Um, later on, I mean, I have, uh, you know, at, at different points in my life had a full gym at home or like right now I've just got a set of kettlebells, but uh, you know, I live in a townhouse instead of a five thousand square foot house. Right, but you work um, out. You work out in the gym, right? More, more. Right, than the garage. Oh, hey, you know, but I work out in the gyms because they've got all. You know, I don't have to buy all this stuff, and they have a bunch of things that you don't use. You find out what what I don't use and what's, uh, you know, what's a waste of my money. Uh, right. So I think the most bang for the buck financially is a gym, uh, and you can shop around. Uh, you know, but. Probably the first consideration for somebody with a job is, is uh, convenience in terms mm -hmm. of how close is it. Um, right. Is it going to be available the hours you want to work out and uh, things like that? Yeah. And what, and what is it? What are the uh, the peak hours? And you know, is that are you comfortable yeah, even, comfortable with that? Yeah, the peak hours. If you go there, uh, are you going to be able to get get the stuff? Use the stuff you want. Usually, you know, in most of the the course I've got there is just barbells and dumbbells, which are you know, uh, people tend to uh, occasionally monopolize machines, but that's just yeah, you know, don't worry about it. Um, mm -hmm. it you'll 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 figure it out. Uh, you know, the uh, the etic gym etiquette at least these days for me is kind of a mystery because um, when I, when I came up that people were very, very accommodating, let you work in. And now they seem to think they own a piece of equipment if they're working, if they're <laughs> lifting on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And they um, and have an attitude about it too. Oh uh, yeah. A little bit. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I, I work out at two different, um, two, two different, well, actually three different gyms, but one of them, people have an attitude and they're kind of, you know, turkeys, but in the other one, people are, um, much, much different. They, you know, generous help you, you know, right. You know, Hey, you want to work in that kind of stuff. So it's just, it doesn't, uh, you know, yeah, it's so you hard probably, to say. 
fine. You, you probably want to you know, just... get a, like a, a week or a two week free trial or something. Get that out of the gym to yeah. see if you yeah, like it how... before you commit. Yeah. Right, right. See how much of a free trial you can get before you commit. And then uh, don't. Most of them these days don't ask you to sign up for a year or have an initiation fee. Mm -hmm. um, so get as much freebie up front as you can. Um, and uh, if you're over 65, you should be able to get uh, the, into the Silver Sneakers program that where your insurance company pays for your gym membership or gym workouts. So, now what, um, tell, that, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Um, what is that? Okay, is, that uh, is that a government program or that's an insurance program? I think it's a. I think it's for anyone on Medicare. Okay. Um, so you need and, to be. You, you know, need to be on on Medicare to take I, advantage I of that. So again, to be honest with you, when I signed up for it, um, the uh, you know I just did it at a senior center. Tell them you want the Silver Sneakers program, and they signed you up. And uh, in my case, uh, LA Fitness and Twenty Four Hour Fitness. That's free for me. Wow. Oh. You know. And, Nice. Would be for anybody who's in that program. Uh, I, I assume there's East Coast gyms that have the same kind of arrangement. In fact, most uh, most gyms that have any kind of electronic swipe um, or electronic uh, check-in will will be involved in the Silver Sneakers program um, because they just automatically bill, um, you know, whoever's paying for it. So. I see. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right, everybody, listen to that. If you're 65 or older, Silver Sneakers yep, yep. program. I'm going to have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, you know, and I would have had some. Uh, I would have had some uh, sign up information available if it hadn't just come up out of the blue in our interview here. But you know, it, oh, that's okay. I, well, I, we'll have another interview, and we'll 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 just talk about Silver Sneakers. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll just talk about how to get it. So, but again, if you're yeah. over 65, hey, you know, go for it. So, anyway. That's that's great information. Well, one, one more question uh, before we leave. What uh, what words of advice would you like to leave our, our listeners? Um, this, if you, if you get in shape, you will you will cherish the way you feel 24 7 365 i mean it's it's literally amazing and it's something that you know if you're not in shape it's hard to even relate to um the you know the payoff for this is immense and it's not just for you it's for anybody who cares about you i mean because you're on deck you know when your family needs you you're you're there for to help friends, you you are basically the sort of person who can uh, who doesn't become a problem for others. You are the ones that help them, you know. So this idea of helping others is uh, part of your, um, you know, the way you operate already. So again, this is just one more thing that uh, it pays you off in the way you feel. But boy, it's really important for those you're helping, and those you those you care about, and those who care about you. Well, that's great words of advice. Thank you, Richard. And thank you again so much for, for all of your help with the program and, and doing this interview. And hopefully we can do it again soon. Okay. Well, hey, my pleasure. I can't encourage everybody enough, man. You just, this is, this is, you know, one of those things. There's no bad, there's no downside to this. It's all good. So. Great. Thanks again, Richard. Till next time, Richard. Take care. Till next time. Bye. Bye-bye.